So Jamal Nayaz here for Monopoly events at Comic Con Liverpool with one of the best bad guys in the business, Jeff Bell. What's it been like geeking out with the fans about all your projects from the business to Green Street to Top Boy, Rock and Roller? You've got such a storied career. Yeah, I've been very blessed, I suppose. But uh, no, it's been great. I mean, it, it's my second Comic Con I've ever done and it, this is on a massive scale and it's been really nice. People are great. It's just been fun, yeah. I was in the room before when you reunited with Elijah. All those years later, it was so nice to see such a, a, a genuine embrace and you guys were reflecting on those times you had together. That must be one of the best things about coming to these events, bumping into people that you might not have even known Elijah was, was going to be here maybe uh, until today. Absolutely. Uh, well, last time I bumped into Sir Derek Jacobi, which I hadn't seen for 15, 17 years, you know, one of my early jobs I did with that man, and it was beautiful. And today, seeing Elijah, Elijah, you know, after all these, we'd done two jobs together. We did Green Street, obviously, which we're t nearly 20 years old, and we did Treasure Island, which was a very beautiful, beautiful job. And it's lovely seeing him today. He's got two children now, you know. And I know you were taken aback when he mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, he, and he met my son, who's here today, and uh, my son was only about seven when we worked together, when he last see him. So very nostalgic, but the sad thing is how fast it goes. No, that is that is very true. Yeah. When I when I look back at my childhood, one of the first sort of adult rated films that my dad showed me was The Business. He absolutely loved it and I, I read the book as well that it was based on. I mean that period that it was the football factory before that and then you did the business and Green Street, they both released in the same year, two thousand and five yeah. I believe. Both, yeah, the same. Yeah, they're both baddies but they're so different. The characters are so different yeah. and I think that's uh that's really down to me you know in the business I went and had a perm you know my hair <laughs> I had it perm yeah. so 80s and it's you know playing a villain it's like playing a baddie that they both come from somewhere so those backstories were very different you know and I think that's the way I kind kind of create my characters is I give them a really a, you know my backstory is the most important thing and then I take it from there where they were how they got there you started your acting journey fairly late by modern standards 29 years old but you go on to work with guys like steven spielberg who no doubt you'll have idolized like we all did growing up what what's that experience like going from your mid-20s maybe 24 25 not quite knowing what what direction your life was going to go in to then being face to face working with one of the greatest icons in the history of cinema well, you just said it really i mean i would never have dreamed that a boy out of council flats in Lambeth, you know, would ever be uh, working with the the great Steven Spielberg was like Disney to me. He was like our Disney when we were kids, you know, Jaws and films like that, and you know, just amazing ET and just incredible, incredible work. And to work with a man and go meet him first of all to get the job, you know, I didn't get offered it. You have to go and earn the crust to meet them. So I went there and it was a great character, Sergeant Perkins, and it was a dream, dream job. And Spielberg loved me. He kept me there for an extra week because he loved me. Wow. And to hear him say, Jeff, we love your eyes, you know, it's just, you know, what you do. And doing the training with the horses was like, I couldn't have dreamed it as a boy who did start late, you know, at 29 years of age. I always wanted to do it, but circumstances kept me, held me back until I was right, I suppose, ready to go in the time I wanted. And you start by doing plays and, you know, in the theatre, which I... I'd recommend the way to do it and that's how it's gone on from strength to strength. And I mentioned Top Boy as well, you was in the first season back in 2011 on Channel 4 and now when you look at the Goliath that it's become on Netflix, I was watching it back in 2011, I was in year 9 back then and uh, it was very gritty and hard hitting and I obviously knew you from your work yeah. in the business, could you see how big that show was going to become today back then? Straight away, when we got when we got when when I had to go up for for Top Boy, when it, I mean they wanted me for Top Boy, I had to go and meet them all. And anyway, when we when I read it, I knew that it was groundbreaking TV. There was nothing like it done. We really knew that it was kind of like like The Wire, but it was an English version. But we really wanted to do 10, 12 episodes, but they didn't have the money, so it was taking a chance on Top Boy anyway, because of you know the the uh, 
relative what it's about, you know, like drugs and that, and in the inner streets of London. But it was so raw, we knew it was special. And I was just gutted I got killed in it because uh, I don't think we should have, you know, that's just that's just four part. You didn't think how massive it's going to return. But uh, wonderful experience. And I, I loved doing that and I loved creating the character Bobby Ray because I thought he was a great character. Final one, I've asked all the actors I've interviewed across the weekend this, quite a fun question. If you could host a dinner party with five characters from the world of film and television, who would they be and why? Five characters from the world of television. I'd have Billy Connolly for the humour. Great stories I imagine he's got. Could they have to be alive or dead? Yeah, either, either. I'd have James Cagney, one of the greatest gangsters ever made and as a kid watching all these things. I think I'd have uh, maybe Robert De Niro, obviously, because he's a god. Muhammad Ali and uh, another one I've got to put a lady in there maybe Meryl Streep she's one of the greatest so uh, a bit of a deer hunter reunion as well absolutely and Christopher Walken's for it in yeah. got it all <laughs> amazing <laughs> well it's been a pleasure speaking to you you're one of I- the icons of British cinema and uh, you've shone overseas as well on the biggest stages you know we've got the picture of you in Star Wars as well we didn't even mention that but yeah just keep doing what you're doing. It's an incredible story. Like I mentioned, a late start, but you've more than more than made your mark on the biggest stage. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. It's been a it's been a, it's been a lovely journey. You know, looking back now, it's it's starting to change as well because I'm as I'm getting older, I'm getting interesting parts. You know, at the moment I'm I'm starting to write and direct my own stuff since COVID. It's multi award winning awards I've won for my own work, so I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, next 10 years, see what happens. Amazing. Really appreciate the time.